Hey everybody, Dr. Marshall Green here at TheAestheticFace.com here today to answer one of the questions that comes in a lot um, from folks either on the website or on Real Self or the places we kind of talk about cosmetic surgery and that is what is lipotisma and what do we do about it? So um, you can Google the platisma and you're going to get some great pictures and anatomy drawings and you're like, well, what, what exactly is this muscle thing and why, where does it play into my facelift surgery? So the easiest way to, to talk about this is just to show you. The platisma is a fan-shaped muscle that covers the, almost the whole neck region. So if I do this, you kind of see this big fan-shaped muscle. That's my platisma going out like this. Kind of comes posterior a little bit, big fan, all right? So that's the platisma muscle. And what happens to the platysma as we age, a couple things can actually happen. One of the first things patients tend to see is what we call platysmal banding. So patients will kind of get two rope-like bands in the anterior part of the neck. And so it kind of gets loose. So the platysma actually comes to your midline and can leave a small gap between the two anterior edges of the platysma. As we age, that gap kind of widens, those bands get more prominent, and you kind of get like this double banded look in the anterior part of the neck. And that's early platysmal banding. So someone might come in interested in a, in a facelift or a neck lift to treat that area of platysmal banding, okay? Now as we age a little bit further along, I'm gonna turn sideways for you here, we begin to get the loose skin in the neck and the, the muscle and skin begin to hang down here and you get more of what patients will classically call the turkey neck appearance. And that's where the platysmas and the submental soft tissue have really lost all of their elasticity. So what has to happen is that muscle has got to be addressed and as facelift surgery has progressed and aged and patients want more with less downtime, um, surgeons have kind of gotten to this mode of promising things ahead of time that may not always be realistic. So if, you have, if you're looking at facelift surgery and, and you are talk with your surgeon, ask them are they planning to address the platysma or the SMAS, that's the other muscle layer that's underneath the, 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 the skin of the face. I've got a blog article on the website all about the SMAS, which shows you some surgical pictures of how we address that SMAS layer, more back in this area. Now the platysma needs to be addressed via what we call a, a corset platysmaplasty or some type of approach to the anterior platysma. Classically, this is a small incision underneath the chin that heal, heals almost imperceptibly, and the dissection is done in the anterior part of the neck and those muscles are brought back together again and made nice and tight. So you get a nice, tight, redefined neckline, redefined neckline in the anterior part of the neck, and then all the extra skin is brought back in the posterior direction. Okay? So, once again, what I'm talking about is the platysmaplasty, or corset platysmaplasty, which should be part of your lower facelift and or neck lift, if that's what you're talking about having. And in some rare cases, there, you know, patients have a, there is a genetic predisposition to the turkey neck. So if your mom, you pull up the pictures and mom's got that big loose neck really early on in life and you're seeing it in the mirror, there's a genetic predisposition that can occur there. So thank mom for that one. Um, but the good news is if you're really early on and you're really young um, and you have skin elasticity still, your skin's going to tighten and restretch, a lot of times we can do an isolated platysmaplasty. That means just through the incision right here, we can go in and tighten up the neck muscles, all right, redrape some of the soft tissue, and we don't have to go and do a whole lower facelift and just do the isolated platysmaplasty for you in that young patient with a little bit of early um, laxity or that, that, that fullness without this defined neck angle that we talked about again. So once again, corsal platysmoplasty and uh, platysmoplasty standalone, um, not in conjunction with the facelift. Hope we answered your questions on that. Log in once again, theaestheticface.com. Check us out, Dr. G at theaestheticface.com. Shoot me an email, happy to answer your questions. Thanks so much.